Dark Maths Made Easy. This video is aimed at people who struggle with the mental arithmetic required to calculate scores in a game of darts. You will learn a few easy tricks to simplify the addition and subtraction of two and three digit numbers typically encountered during 01 games. If you are already comfortable with your ability to keep score, you don't really need to watch this video. In truth, calling it maths, or math if you're an American speaker, is overreaching somewhat. What we need is plain and simple arithmetic, the easiest part of mathematics. We don't even need multiplication and division, just addition and subtraction. Granted, there are doubles and triples to take into account, but you shouldn't be trying to do the multiplication every time. Instead, you should learn by heart the values of all the doubles and trebles. And yes, the correct term is treble, not triple. The good news is, you already know some of these. For example, what did I score with this dart? 60 points, of course. I'd hope that no dart player ever has to stop and think, what's 20 multiplied by 3? Here are all the values. Pause the video and take a screenshot if you wish. Study them until they become second nature. Memorize as many as possible. Start with the high value trebles, 20, 19, 18, etc. And the common doubles, 20, 18, 16. Aim to eventually have everything memorized. Okay, now let's talk about addition. Your first challenge as a scorekeeper is to add the points thrown. So let's throw some darts. First dart is a 60. Second dart is a 15. Now, to be clear, the things I'm writing on the right-hand side of the screen are not things you would physically write down. This side represents what you were trying to work out in your head, and the left-hand side of the screen will show what you actually write. So your task now is to add 60 and 15. There's a very important principle used in this simple addition. Whenever one number ends in a zero, the last number in the answer will always be the same as the other number's last digit. You don't have to think about it. There's no calculation involved, it just is. That means the only mental arithmetic you need to do here is to add six and one to get seven, which then goes next to the five to give the answer 75. Here comes the third dot. It's another 60. Add 75 and 60 using the principle just learned. Start by adding the two left-hand digits, six and seven to give 13. And, because the 60 ends in a zero, the 5 from the 75 automatically drops into the last position to give the answer of 135. But let's make things a little more difficult by making the third dart hit 57 rather than 60. Your challenge now is to add 75 and 57. But there's no zero on the end, so the principle we just learned can't be applied. Or can it? The trick to making this easy is to round up one of the numbers to a number that does end in a zero. For example, let's round 57 up to 60. We just did that exercise and the answer we got was 135. Now we need to adjust that answer to allow for the fact that it was really 57 and not 60. We do that by subtracting the difference between 57 and 60, which is 3, to give the correct answer of 132. You might not need to use this trick in every situation. Some additions are so simple they don't need any tricks. For example, 21 plus 3, no need for any fancy maths there, 24. But whenever the situation looks tricky, apply this solution and it works in any situation. Round up, add, subtract the difference. Like most things, it gets easy with practice. So let's practice. 60. 25. An easy addition. 6 plus 2 is 8, and end with the 5. 57. Round up to 60, and add to get 145. Then subtract 3 to get 142. Let's try to do the next example without writing anything down. 60. 54. Add 5 and 6 to get 11, and a 4 on the end makes it 114. 19. Add 20 to 114 to get 134, 
then subtract 1 for a score of 133. At this point, you might be thinking, and this makes it easier, how? But I assure you, the more you practice using this principle, the easier it will get. So start using it and keep using it until it becomes second nature. Okay, let's talk subtraction. The trick here is similar to the trick used for addition. We round up the number to be subtracted, then after subtracting it, we add back in the difference. In our previous example, the first player threw 133. The scorekeeper must now subtract that score from 501. Start by rounding 133 up to 140. The subtraction now becomes much easier to do in your head. Again, when the rightmost digit of the number being subtracted is a zero, the rightmost digit of the other number automatically gives you the rightmost digit of the answer. All you have to be concerned with are the numbers on the left. So the problem becomes 50 minus 14, and the answer there is 36. Finally, add back the 7 to get the answer 368. The next player throws. 85 scored. Applying the principle you've just learned, you might choose to subtract 90 and add five to get 416. But an even easier calculation would be to subtract 100 and add back 15. By rounding up to 100, you've made the first step, 500 minus 100, a no-brainer. The trick works every time. Round up, subtract, add back the difference. To subtract 89, subtract 100, and add back 11. If you want to subtract 180, subtract 200 and add back 20. Practice is the key to getting better. Challenge yourself. If you typically use an app when keeping score while practicing, turn it off for a while. The more you do it, the easier it gets. And that's it for this video. From comments on a previous release of this video, I know that some people will get the message I'm trying to convey, and others will think I'm making things overly complicated. That's fine. It's simply a reflection of the fact that we all learn differently. What works for some does not necessarily work for all. There are other ways of doing it, but this is what works for me. Hopefully, if you watch this point, you found some value in my approach. Thank you for watching, and shoot well.